This is Thoughts 23 here, and today we're going to go through my top 10 never sell knives. Blade shows right around the corner, and I'd like to do this to see if any of this might change. You know, I might pick up something that replaces one of these. You never know. So we'll get started. They're in no particular order, except at the end I will give you my top three in the entire collection. First up, we have the Strider PT here, and this is where my love for the PT started. My wife picked this up for me for my anniversary. This is the first night, our first anniversary, uh, our first knife my wife ever picked up for me, and I think she did a great job. This was an old school one with the Lego G10. And um, whenever they came out with the newer version with the newer blade shape and the titanium scales as a standard model, uh, I was really excited. So this one's definitely on my list. Uh, these are not, these two are definitely not going anywhere, especially not this one. Excellent knives made in the U.S. Um, both of them have S30V steel, more than uh, adequate for this size blade. And man, oh man, this thing took a wicked, wicked, wicked sharp edge. Next up, we have the Custom Knife Factory Evo 3.0. Um, I I love a lot about this one. If my my 2.0 version that I have had this inlay in it, I'd probably choose it over this one because this one has the only thing I don't like about this one is, is that edge. Yeah, I can easily rub my finger across that edge, and that's that's not a good thing at all. But I still love the knife, super comfortable. I think it looks great. It's either love it or hate it design. It's comfortable in hand, no matter which way I grab it. It's got a nice deep hollow grind on it. And just look at that, it just looks mean. In addition of that micarta inlay just looks so nice. And next up is probably the only hard use knife in this uh, list. And that is my Demco 8020 with the original goat frag titanium scales. And this is, DLT exclusive and crew wear. Um, this knife is just a beast. If you didn't catch my review and testing of this knife, it can handle some stuff. And uh, definitely the strongest on this list. And I love that, that metallic clickety clack sound it makes every time you open it and whenever you release that lock. So smooth. Yeah, this is a, a really, really awesome knife. USA made as well. It's wearing a Pops Customs Deep Carry Pocket Clip, Titanium Clip. Yeah, this is a sweet knife. Wish they were, I wish you'd produce more of these or more quantities of these. All right, we have the Monterey Bay Knives Sea Otter. This is the one I picked up at Blade Show last year. Um, I added this clip to it, but it's got the Frag Titanium and the multi-grind blade of in uh, CPM Magna Cut. I mean, I, I, I sat at uh, Monterey Bay Knives booth last year, talked to Ray Laconico and uh, Stanford Owen. They're so nice and they're just so fun to talk to. And any kind of questions, if I had knife making questions or anything like that, they're so willing to help. And um, they've always been nice from the get go. You know, even before they knew I had a channel, they were always nice guys, and uh, they're always willing to uh, chat with their customers. And I, I just, I like this one. I, I love the Sea Otter. I mean, it's it's a USA made produced knife. It's a good size knife, and uh, yeah, it's just a good EDC knife overall. Next up, we have my Dimco AD 20.5, and this is a complete makeover <laughs> you have the transparent knives reblade on here in CP and magna cut at 64 rockwell and it is ground down to a laser beam <laughs> nice and thin i think mine's like eight thousandths behind the edge this thing right here has ruined so many knives for me because once you slice with something that has a custom heat treat on it and that thin behind the edge, everything else feels like a, a, a splitting maul whenever you're cutting with it. This thing, even whenever this thing's dull, it still slices better than most of my knives in my collection. It's wearing um, a titanium scales made by Knife Tastic. He did a beautiful job on those. Um, it's wearing a uh, Lynch Northwest deep carry pocket clip. The only thing that's still factory on this knife is the pivot and these two pins and the lock thing right here. <laughs> Other than that, Backspacer is from uh, Knife Tastic as well. So yeah, love this knife. 
Excellent, excellent knife. Next up, we have the Richard Rogers SLT, OEM SLT. It's just a stunning knife. I really, really wish uh, or hope that Richard Rogers uh, la maybe sends this design to Tactile Knife Co. Maybe a little bit bigger. I think that would be awesome. I love the look of this, um, the size. It's, it's a smaller knife. I still get a four-finger grip on it. Um, it's probably the smallest knife in this list. Let me see. Is it small? It's about probably the same size as the PT. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it's about the same exact size as the Strider PT. It might be a hair longer than the PT. Well, close. Uh, I just love that, that micro milling. These were OEM by Best Tech and they absolutely killed it. I love the blurple. Yeah, super cool knife. Um, I wish you'd do more of these because I know they're hard, hard to get, but super, super nice um, EDC size and weight for me, our gents carry. It's coming from Koenig Knives, and that's my Koenig Arius Flipper Delete. Picked this up at Blade Show either last year or year before. Um, and it's been so cool to watch Koenig grow over the years. Whenever I first started the channel, I, don't know, I, I wasn't... I wasn't, but maybe a year in, um, a buddy of mine sent me ver the, uh, version one and version two of the Arius, and it, they were vastly different. You know, they improved more and more, and now I don't know if this is a version three or where they're at, but um, it, it's, it's just dialed in perfection. Their machining tolerances are so nice. Um, everything is intentional on here. The action is incredible while still having a bank vault. When I say bank vault, I cannot muscle any place I decide uh, up or down. Beautiful hollow grind, and this thing slices like nobody's business. I need to do my full review of this one um, because it just cuts so well. That is a Koning Knives Arius. Next up, we have the Shirogorov Neon Zero. And I, I, I love the minor monochromatic look to this knife i just i like it it's simple it's no frills i think it's clean as can be it has a remarkable remarkable action just watch this this thing snaps out like nobody's business um the drop shot's not as good as my my regular neon light uh but the flipping action is just far superb um just a clean knife. I don't love the pocket clip. Their pocket clips kind of suck, or at least on the, the neons. They're so, there's no, you can hardly pull them up. But I force it into my jeans because I like it that much. M390 on this one. Yeah, great size. This is perfect size for me. So number three spot was between this, uh, this one and this one. <laughs> this is the Jason Guthrie Scout. And this is the Trevor Burger, is it ECW or something like that? I, I, I never can remember. Somebody helped me out in the uh, comments. I went back and forth, back and forth. And uh, I think if I'm going to have to give a number three spot, it's going to be to my JG Scout. Um, I, I've always thought this was a, a, a excellent looking knife and just a classic, you know, drop point. And it just looks different from anything I have. Um and then not to mention Jason Guthrie is a super nice guy. I think he's, is he from South Africa? I can't remember, but I think he is. Um, it's got such, such a beautiful hand rub satin. And I, I've done some testing on this one and that, that satin is still perfection. I've cut a lot of stuff with it actually. Now this one is more in pristine shape because um, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to keep it and I just don't think it's going to stick around because the only means to deployment on this one is a front flipper and it's a great front flipper. I mean, excellent front flipper. I just, I don't like front flippers that much. You know, I thought I could get over it because I, I like the, uh, the overall knife besides that. I love the vintage micarta in here. So I think this one's gonna go up for sale. Somebody wants to make me an offer before I actually put it on the chopping block, you're more than welcome. But make sure you don't, if you do that, don't lowball me. <laughs> See what these cost new. Um, it's a beautiful knife, no doubt. He does phenomenal work. Just look at that micro milling. 
Yep, like I said, I never used this one. Yeah. Number two favorite knife in the collection, never gonna sell, is the NCC Knives and Rob Carter BBM. Man, oh man, this thing is sexy in my opinion. And I'm not even that big of a Tanto fan. You got a Harpoon Tanto. Just check out those milling lines. You can get them with or without that. Uh, and then the finishing on these scales. You got like a brushed finish over the top of like blasting on the uh, diamond texture. And I love how it, it goes from big to fading down to nothing. And then his anno work is just on another level. And that uh, zirconium gear, just ugh, such a good looking knife. Now, I love this knife. If you didn't see my review and testing of this knife, go check it out because that'll show you how good Nitro V can be done when it's like when it's got a custom heat treat. This thing performed outstanding. And after that, all I do is drop it up, and I still got a nice shaving sharp edge right now. Uh, the only thing that Keeps me from carrying this a lot more. And I said it before, and it's my fault because I haven't, you know, contacted Nick yet. Is that zirconium pocket clip. It doesn't sit, it doesn't sit on onto the frame because uh zirconium doesn't have that same spring memory as titanium does. And uh that causes that that has caused this thing to fall out of my pocket three times. At least two of the times was in my truck. And third time, it was in the couch cushions in my living room. So I, I was super lucky there. <laughs> Only time I carry this now is where I'm, when I'm wearing thicker jeans to where I know it's going to hold it tightly. Because uh, it's just too expensive of a knife and one that I like too much for this thing to go bye-bye. But it's still in my number two spot. That's how much I like it. If you've been watching my channel long enough, you know what the number one knife is because it hadn't changed in a while. And that is my Oz, Oz Machine Company, Roosevelt. And this is in the number one spot for many reasons. First of all, it checks all the boxes. It's super lightweight. I love the blade shape. It's comfortable in hand. The action is just yummy. It makes that beautiful clack sound. Um, I was able to custom spec this out with the fat carbon show scale and the purple Timascus clip and purple hardware with the black frame. And this is the first knife I've ever been able to get on somebody's books before they got super, super popular. You know, this one is number 18. 18, I don't know what, I don't know what number he's on now, but it's way past 18. And you can tell this is an older one because this one doesn't even have the swedge that he puts on all the knives now. I, I really wish I had one with the swedge. And this one's an ABL. But <laughs> that was what he was using in the beginning before he even started using the Zephanet. And then now Magna Cut. Um, I will eventually own one of the newer versions in Magna Cut. And it'll probably just be a, a normal titanium frame one. Not, nothing fancy. I just... I want I want to retire this one, stop using this one, and uh, have a daily user out of the other one. But I'm not paying any of those ridiculous uh, prices. Somebody wants to trade me. Uh, somebody want to trade me a a newer Rosie for this? More than welcome. <laughs> I'm sure nobody would. Nobody wants to get off their Rosie. But yeah. Overall, you know, I, there's nothing really bad I can say about this knife, especially knowing that whenever he made this, he was just starting out. You know, this is his first folder, and he came out the gate swinging. I mean, just amazing machining work, and such a nice, genuine guy. So nice. Every time I've talked with him, he has been nothing but nice and uh, responsive, and I'm glad to see his his success. So. That's my top 10 in my collection. What are your top three in your collection? I would love to know down below. Uh, I always like reading those to see what, you know, what what y'all what y'all favorite things are. Um, <laughs> we usually get a pretty wide array of, of answers down in the comments, and that's what's cool because, you know, if we all like the same thing, it'd be a super boring community. At least I think it would. <laughs> 
and uh, it's it's the variety of life that keeps things interesting. Y'all let me know what y'all think about my top 10. Which one would y'all pick if y'all had to pick one out of this? If I had to sell all these, which one would y'all pick? Now, if y'all are... Uh, if y'all are looking for a night to buy here in the next uh, week or two, I will be doing several knife sales to get ready for uh, Blade Show Atlanta. I have a lot of knives on the chopping, chopping block. Of course, it's not going to be any of these. Um, <coughs> well, that one will be on the chopping block. But other than that, all these other ones will be sticking around right here. But I have a lot of other ones. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.